Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. We are here to do our seventh week of Sunday devotionals. That's how long we have been wow. in quarantine, seven <laughs> weeks, which is so crazy. And uh, I have been joined almost every week by my friend Chris from Germania. And thank you so much, Chris, for coming on and doing this, especially this week. I feel like I've needed it even more than any other <laughs> week. It's been so crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Well, these have been very encouraging to me, too. And like you said, it's the seventh week. And I, I like we were saying right before we hit record, I can't believe it's still April. Like, that's how time is going so slow for me during this quarantine time. It's like, oh, my gosh, it's still April. Normally, when it feels like this passage of time has passed, it's July. But no, yeah. we're still in April gosh <laughs> yeah it's really it's really crazy and uh i'm, I'm gonna talk, give a health update this can be like half talk half half health update uh but i have to be even more vigilant than i was before after what has happened and i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> can this weird period of time just end <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's had its blessings of course as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, I mean, this has been a blessing, but, uh, but, oh wow. It's just been such a weird time to be a human. That's for sure. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so this week we were talking about peace in times of, of trial. And, uh, I, I, I think you suggested this, given everything that has been happening to me and it was just like the perfect choice and so i was grateful for that and uh so what i'm going to do is read my little talk that i wrote and like i said it, it is kind of half talk half half uh health update because i know a lot of uh, you listening and watching have been concerned and i've really been so grateful for your thoughts and prayers and expressions of uh of um, uh, one with me and just your kind, kind things that you've said, and uh, it's been a lot to me. Uh, and, um, so I know that a lot of you are anxious to find out what's going on. Uh, and, uh, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> I'm still learning. We're still figuring things out, but, uh, anyway, I'll talk a little bit about what we know so far and what's going on. So here we go. So this is now our seventh week of these Sunday devotionals. I remember when they first announced the lockdowns and eight weeks seemed like an eternity. That's what uh, I think it was uh, AMC or one of them said that they started out with six to eight weeks or maybe Disneyland or one of them said yeah. eight weeks. And I was like, what? They wow. can't close something for eight weeks. <laughs> and now it feels like we still have so long to go. I mean, it's it, if things go as... Uh, if things go well, we'll be back in movie theaters uh, in July. So we yeah. still have two full months at least, which is going to be crazy. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, I, I think that that uh, during this time we've also uh, we've also had a lot of time to contemplate and think about holier topics and and holy themes, uh, including. And, uh, you know, a lot about Jesus and his atonement. And we've had that to help us to get through this, uh, this experience. And I think that doing these each week's week has really helped me. I oddly think I'm like more spiritually in a good place than I was before. Uh, yeah. or certainly if you were to look at this same time last year, I'm in a much better space, uh, spiritually than I was now than I was last year. So that's a blessing, I guess. Yeah, that is a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but because uh, the Lord promises us in John 16, says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me, you might have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, which I, is one of my favorite scriptures. I, I love, love that scripture very much. I love that yes. scripture. And so as most of you know, this week, I've gone through a, a trying time in addition to what was already a trying time. <laughs> and, uh, and I've come out of it with renewed testimony of the peace the Spirit provides to help get, through, get us through any trial we experience. 
Uh, for the last few months, I've not been feeling well. And many of you know that I've been complaining about my breathing uh, being wheezy and uh, it labored. And uh, it's something I've even worried about on the podcast, you know, that can people hear that I'm breathing. And uh, so it's been challenging. And I, I worried that, uh, that I had the COVID-19, I had a lot of the symptoms, but then I went and got tested as negative. And, uh, and so that was good, but also a little frustrating because it's like, well, what is it? What's going on with me? And that's kind of a, a hard position to be in. And so I went to uh, one doctor and this was in March and he was very dismissive. He was not a good doctor. This was just at the Instacare, which usually is great by me. But anyway, this particular doctor, he was pretty dismissive of me and he just gave me an inhaler and said I was just asthma and that was it. He didn't look any further at what was going on. And so I was like, okay, I guess. And he gave me a prednisone as well. And so I kept, kept kind of going and still not feeling well. And I think honestly, if there hadn't been this thing of COVID, I think I probably would have just kind of kept going and just figured, oh, it's just a cold or whatever. But because there's this higher threat, I, I felt more motivation to make sure I figured it out and got it yeah. looked at. And so finally, uh, this last uh, Tuesday uh, or Wednesday, I, uh, I was just, I felt like I was worried that I would stop breathing at night. Like that's what was, I don't know that I just, I just started to get more and more sort of worried because my breathing was just such a problem. And so I finally decided, okay, I'm going to go in to the Instacare. And this was my problem because I didn't ever make a primary care physician because I couldn't find one that I really liked. And so I was just like, I, I went to the doctor so rarely that I was like, oh, I can just go to the Instacare. No problem. That was stupid. Don't, don't, don't make that mistake. <laughs> that was dumb because now I can't get a primary care physician because nobody's accepting new patients because of the COVID. And so I have to either go to the emergency room or to the, or to the Instacare and uh, which is not ideal for this kind of, when you want uh, sort of a long, when you have a long-term medical problem. Uh, so anyway, that was, that was very dumb of me, but uh, that caused some problems. And uh, so I went to the Instacare and they were really concerned. My blood pressure was really high. My breathing was, was, was faster than it should have been. My heart rate was fast. And they, they said, I really think you need to go to the emergency room. And I, so I did, uh, and I was kind of nervous about it because it's expensive to go to the emergency room. And uh, my attitude a lot of times is they can't really do anything about it. So what's the point? But they felt like there was just so many different tests that they can do at the emergency room that I should go. And so I did. And to my surprise, I was in the, um, I was in the uh, respiratory unit of the hospital. It was completely empty. There was not a single other patient. Wow. So I don't know, that's just a Utah thing, yeah. or whatever, <laughs> but it was completely empty, but I ended up being there for about eight hours as they did oh. uh, one test after another test after another test. And, and the doctor couldn't really figure out what was wrong with my breathing, but he definitely was obviously very concerned about the high blood pressure. And, uh, and he felt like there was some problems with my heart. And uh, so he wanted me to go and get, go to an, a, a cardiologist and get an echocardiogram it's called. So that's what I did this last, uh, that's what I did on Friday. And uh, I, I actually ended up, I, they did the echocardiogram, the nurse practitioner, and then, uh, and then I, met, I talked to the doctor about the results over the phone, which is kind of funny. Uh, but I really liked the doctor and he was really great and he was very professional uh, and just, but also like very encouraging. He was like, we've got this, it'll be great. And so he That's made good. me feel really confident and uh, and he gave me some prescriptions to help with the blood pressure and, uh, and I'm trying not to get any salt or as little salt as possible, at least for this beginning time and, uh, some other things. And I'm going to see him again on Tuesday or talk to him again on Tuesday. And, uh, so, uh, he basically said that my heart is not pumping the way that it norm that it should, uh, it's called an ejection fracture and, uh, and they, 
in like a normal ejection fracture on a, on a heart is like what's it pumping out is normally like 55 to 60%. Mine is like a 30%. So it's quite a bit lower than it should be. And so we've got to get that blood pressure down and we got it. And that will help with the breathing problems because they're all connected. And, and then he also gave me a water pill to help with some fluid that was in the lungs was causing some of that. So it's all, it's all kind of connected. And, and as you know, we continue to kind of figure it out and it's going to, this is just the beginning of a journey. Uh, and, uh, and I definitely have not been keep, keeping, taking care of my health the way that I should, um, for a while, because I was just so overwhelmed by the, by the podcasts that I've been doing and everything, uh, which is not a good excuse, but nevertheless, that's, that's the way it is. And uh, so anyway, it was a, it was obviously a very stressful experience and a hard experience, but I left feeling uh, feeling a, a sense of peace. And that's the point of this, this story is I, I was worried I was going to go to the doctor and they were going to say, there's, we don't see it. We don't know what's wrong. You know, the mystery illness thing, which has happened to me in my life. And that's awful. And it's really, really stressful. And, uh, and you feel like, oh, people don't believe me, all of that. And so the fact that I went out of the doctors on Friday with a plan for treatment with prescriptions, with a diagnosis, all of that was very comforting to me. And I just felt so, I, I, I was obviously, I'm obviously concerned and taking it very seriously, but I felt, it's, I felt very empowered and I felt very at peace about the whole situation. And I went from a, a feeling of kind of panic about what's going on with me, why am I feeling like this, to a feeling of that everything is gonna be okay. And, uh, and I think that was a blessing of the spirit that the, the Lord helped me to be able to feel that peace and to feel yeah. that calm. And I am really grateful for that, uh, that I had that blessing. Uh, you know, they talk about different gifts of the spirit in the scriptures that you can have. And I feel like that was a, a, an example for me of a time where I was blessed to feel I mean, my parents were kind of more upset and worked up than I was. It's like, it's going to be fine. It'll be okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and, and so, I don't know, I just feel very blessed to have found a doctor who seems to be really good at communicating and we've got a plan. And I, so to me, I think it'll end up benefiting my life. I'm going to be healthier. It's going to be, it's going to be great. But, uh, but yeah, it was it was quite an experience, but I'm just so grateful for the sense of peace that I felt, uh, especially as I'm somebody who's prone to anxiety. I'm somebody who mm -hmm. has anxiety to all these things, but I think that's also a result of just the hundreds of prayers that have gone out and will go out for me, uh, that have helped me to also have that peace. And I just really want to say thank you to everybody who, uh, who has said those prayers uh, and who's expressed their love for me that meant so much and uh, I, I just I definitely don't take it for granted and I'm really really grateful and I'm grateful for uh, my relationship with the Lord and that I uh, you know that he watches over me and maybe he like makes me have these times where I'm like what's going on but then <laughs> it, afterwards there's an overflowing of uh, of peace and love and from him. And I'm just so grateful for that. And, uh, I, I just know that if you, uh, if you lean on him through any trial, he will help you to feel that peace. I, I really believe that. And so that's kind of what I wanted to say today. Yeah. It's a little bit different than maybe some of my other things, but I know that many, many listeners have experienced similar things and, and are experiencing them as far as health crises and stuff like that. So you can relate to hopefully that, that, uh, that, connects with you in some way, but I know you've had a, a whole week to think about this topic. What, yeah. what do you think about, uh, um, I guess about my experience, but also your own experiences is, is having peace through a trial. Yeah. I mean, the health scare is always incredibly scary, especially when it's happening to you. So it's just, it's so cool to hear that you're more encouraged with the plan and having peace from God and just knowing it's going to turn out. Okay similar situations I've been in, and these are super long stories, so I'm going to make them super short. Yeah. When I was 14, my dad, you know, used to show horses, 
and one of the horses reared up with my dad on its back. It fell over backwards. I remember you saying that. Yeah. And his injuries were so extensive when that happened, when he was on that horse and it fell, he was supposed to die that very night in the hospital. Now, there's a part of this where I was 14 years old. There were certain things my mom wasn't telling me because she didn't want me to be afraid at that time that I ended up learning later on. So there were certain protections that were there as to why I had peace. Part of it was it was so big and so overwhelming that, you know, I was just kind of numb. But at the same time, I'll tell you what I saw when my dad was in that hospital and was supposed to die. I did see some anxiousness in my mom, some, but I Mm -hmm. saw her go to God. I saw her trust God's promises in the Bible. And I saw her make her stand on those promises. And I saw how even those times where maybe she wasn't sure, I saw her confidence build and that helped my confidence build. And one week later, my dad didn't go home from the hospital. He went straight from the hospital to the church. We, like we just went to church that very next Sunday. And he was supposed to, number one, be dead. And once he wasn't dead, he was supposed to have weeks of home care and needed none of that. The doctor was so impressed by his healing that he was nicknamed the miracle man. And again, that story is just so long. I don't even have time to go into it. There was so much stuff that happened during that week in the hospital. But when each new trial presented itself, I watched my mom and my dad stand on what God promises. And by going to God, they found peace, even in some of these weird things that kept popping up. And then about a decade ago in 2008, so a little bit over 10 years ago, my sister was in a horrifying car accident and had a major traumatic brain injury. She was in a coma for three months, but she too was supposed to die. And this story is even longer. So I'm gonna try to, again, keep it short, but this time I'm older, right? And being older, I'm hearing all this stuff that's going on. I'm actually looking at her brain scans where her brain is so swollen, you can't see the wrinkles on her brain. And her brain was so swollen, they actually thought about cutting off the top of her head and skull just to let, you know, so the brain isn't compressing against that. And my mom said, you will not do that. But she was supposed to die. And there were so many other things that was supposed to happen. But yet again, I saw my mom and my dad, in spite of their pain, and they were in pain and they were scared. And you could see that. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of them being scared, in the midst of the anxiousness, I saw them go to God. And I saw them stand on his word and stand on his promises. And then again, now I'm an adult in this situation, I'm going to God and I'm standing on his word and I'm standing on his promises. And my sister is alive and well today. She still has some after effects from that traumatic brain injury, but she's here and she's still able to tell her story to people and give her testimony and even actually goes to nurses in nursing school and talks about how important their job is. And so, it's amazing the blessing she's even able to be now. My point in all of this is there's, there's a scripture I want to tie this to. And um, it's in Mark chapter four, starting at verse 37. Jesus is in this boat. He and his disciples are going across the water. And this furious squall comes up. And it says, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? I mean, when we're going through those tough times, it's so easy to be like, where are you, Jesus? Are you asleep right now? Like, do you not care about this as much as I do? I mean, in this case, Jesus was actually in the boat with his disciples. He, He definitely cared, but his faith was such that he was asleep. His peace was such that he was asleep. So he got up rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And then he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? That is such a powerful question to me because it's hard when you're in that storm, when that squall in life is is up and you're like, God, where are you? Hello, COVID-19, where are you? Are you asleep? But here's Jesus at such peace that he was asleep in this in the stern of the boat here. Like he was in so much control that he was asleep. In John 14, 27, he says, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. 
But I want to emphasize it's my peace I give you. Jesus's peace, not the world's peace. The world's peace is shaky. Jesus's peace is such that he will be asleep in a boat during a squall. And that's the peace that he leaves with us. He sees COVID-19 and he sees us in it. I mean, he sees you, Rachel, and he sees your week and he's in it with you. But that's the amazing thing about Jesus. So great is he that we could come to him in all of these times and know whether we see it or not, whether we feel it or not, he's working. And we can rest in that faith and know that he will make all things work together for the good of those who love him. Yeah. That's such a great story for this that it, it kind of reminds me of our, our talk on, uh, on courage that we did. Yeah. And, uh, that, that's another thing to kind of remember is that, uh, is, you know, with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, where they said, but if not, yep. I know that you can save me. I know that you can stop this, but if not, I am still going to believe. And I, I, I think that's an important thing to remember, but also it's so ironic when you think about that story because, uh, because it, he was asleep when they were fearful and then how much longer till they're asleep when he's facing yeah. the greatest trial of his oh, life. Oh, that is a great connection. Yes. And yes. I, and he, uh, I don't know that, that, so I wonder if that was a little bit of a teaching moment in a way for, for him with his apostles, but, uh, but, you know, and then he, he calms the storm and, and, and eventually he even in the storm, in a storm, Peter walks on, walks on the water. Yes. And he has that much faith that, uh, he, he can go and do that. Uh, and I, I don't know. I just think he, he gives us these, these challenges that in the end, of course, it takes the, the, uh, perspective. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we don't even know until we won't know until heaven of why, like for instance, my friend who lost her baby, um, why, why did that have to happen? There seems to be no reason. Um, but you know, we, uh, we have to, we have to trust him and, uh, and we have to, you know, that's the absolute wrong time to turn away yeah. when you need him the most. Yes. And like in my family stuff and the stuff that we went through, watching them press into God was probably one of the most amazing things to watch because it, it just, it gives you that foundation. Yeah. And so when my sister was going through that time, I thought back to when my dad was in the hospital and it's like, no, this is it. This is the time to trust God, to have faith in God. This is the time to have that faith perspective because he's bigger than it. He's more powerful than all of this and he will bring us through. And it's hard when you're going through it because you don't see the end from the beginning, but God sees the end from the beginning. And um, one of my favorite scriptures is John 10, 10, because Jesus says in that scripture, it's the thief who comes to steal, kill and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And the yeah. reason I love that scripture is it just sharpens that focus that God's will towards us. Oh, I hit my microphone. My God's <laughs> will towards us. It's good. He cares about us and he wants to bring about our good so we can have faith and know that he will bring about our good. Well, the other thing too, that I, I always try to remember is that anything that you go through is also an opportunity to have more empathy mm -hmm. for, for others. Yeah. now you're part of them you know like when i had my mental health crisis and uh and i i i was not very sympathetic of people going through a mental health crisis it was kind of a uh you know buck up kind of an idea is what i yep. thought and now i have just i just want to give them a hug and be like it'll be okay you'll get through it <laughs> uh and uh and so i think that's sometimes why he gives us these things that we don't understand is it's a chance to make us better people, more empathetic, kinder, uh, and closer to the, the, you know, the kind of person that we need to be in order to get to progress spiritually. Yep. So that, and that most, can be hard to see. <laughs> most challenging scripture in the Bible for me is James one, where he says, consider it pure joy. When you go through trials of various kinds, it's like, are you kidding me, James? <laughs> but again, what is that? That's the faith perspective. Because yeah. when you go through the trial and you know, God is with you in it, you know he's got your highest good in mind, so you can rest in faith. And then, as he says in that verse, as the verse continues, because as you go through those things, you know, your perseverance gets strengthened, your character gets, like, like you just said, those things in you 
get strengthened. Yes. So let us know your thoughts on the things that we've talked about. And I, again, I really, really appreciate everybody's prayers and everybody's kind words that they have said to me. Uh, I, I definitely has not gone unnoticed every single one of them. And uh, so please, uh, please keep those prayers up. I need them. And, uh, and uh, I'll keep you as posted as I can. Uh, like I said, it's the beginning of a long road, long journey. I have no, I no. I have no false ideas of it's a magic pill that's going to make it easy. It's going to be challenging, uh, but uh, I feel, like I said, I feel at peace. I think it's going to be okay. And, uh, and uh, so there we go. Uh, I, uh, there we go. Let me, let us know your thoughts and, uh, and we'll be excited to meet again next, next week. <laughs> if you have any, if you have any suggestions of what we could talk about uh, next week, just put it in the comments. Uh, we'd love to hear that. And thanks again, Chris, you're the best. I really Thank appreciate you, Rachel, it. for having me. And, and you're definitely in my wife and I's prayers. We were praying for you all this week and we're definitely going to keep you in our prayers. Thank you so much, Chris. So how can people find you? You can find me here on YouTube. My channel is called Durbania. So just type in Durbania. I'm the one and only YouTube channel that pops up. I do movie reviews and ranking videos. And what Rachel and I do here with these encouragements, I like to do with my movie reviews. So I like to find something godly and, and spiritual in movies and bring that about. So come over and check it out. Yes. Yes, you totally should. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews here. So please subscribe. Uh, and also at the Hallmarkies podcast. So check that out. We've been getting some really good stuff. Uh, so take a look and uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye everyone.